Victor Frederick Weisskopf. The Stefan University Movie Series, History of Physics. Victor, Vicky, Frederick Weisskopf in La Jolla, California, 1992. An interview by the Alexander Stefan, June 17, 1992, La Jolla, California. Victor, Vicky, Frederick Weisskopf of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, visits, June 16 to 18, 1992, the Institute for Advanced Physics Studies, IAPS, Stefan University. Victor Weisskopf had been the honorary science advisor of the IAPS, Stefan University, from 1989 and forth. In La Valencia Hotel, where Vicky stayed, they would ask about him, who is that classy man? Human existence, says Weisskopf, is based on two pillars, compassion and knowledge. Compassion without knowledge is ineffective, knowledge without compassion is inhumane. Vicky tells us, says Stefan, about the compassion of the people of knowledge, as having an open and loving heart, in general. I will tell about the compassion moment in physics, science, research, as I refer to it. It is the moment when you are aware that any further reasoning process on your topic is in vain. At that moment you open your heart compassionately and let it go, you go fishing or rock climbing or to the movies to see the movie you are not interested in. This applies to any conundrum situation in life, when you simply must let it go, and let somebody else solve the problem for you, so to speak, in a blissful moment some sunny day. In physics research that blissful moment is when all of a sudden the solution to the physics problem pops into your mind, as the aha idea. Accordingly, after the compassion moment comes the blissful moment, if you are lucky enough physicist, Einstein, Bohr, and many a great physicist consider themselves the lucky physicists. Murray Gallman, whose Ph.D. thesis advisor was Weisskopf at the MIT, says this. There are three phases in conceiving creative ideas. The first one characterized with hard work, days, and nights. The second one, by awareness, that further conscious thought is useless, and, the third one, sudden, while we are cycling, or shaving, or cooking when the aha insight pops in. Mystics, says Stefan, refer to the compassion moment as the indifferent love, a love, not through a particular, but through the whole, which engages you know the whole. Recently, I have come across the YouTube movie with Mari Galman and Dalai Lama, among others, discussing the concept of compassion. Uh, this uh, search for uh, forgiveness, uh, compassion, uh, is something that surely in involves, at least occasionally, these uh, parts of the human mind that are somewhat outside of conscious awareness. So there is possibly a relation between creative thinking in art and science and in other fields on the one hand and the search for compassion, forgiveness and so on on the other. Compassion open our mind and then uh, our mind, mental state remain calm and with that kind of mental state you can see the, the reality more clearly. Victor Frederick Weisskopf, a Jewish-born American physicist, is considered one of the true luminaries of the 20th century physics. Vicky was a close colleague friend to a number of the luminary physicists of the 20th century, Albert Einstein, Niels Bohr, Max Born, Wolfgang Pauli, Werner Heisenberg, Paul Ehrenfest, Erwin Schrödinger, Lev Landau, and Richard Feynman, among others. Had you known Weisskopf personally, says Stefan, would you have felt that you were, as a physicist, closer, in some way, to all those luminaries of the 20th century physics, Vicus colleagues' friends?
Vicky played music with Einstein. Vicky on his piano and Einstein on his Lena as he referred to his violin. Vicky, a passionate pianist, also played chamber music at Niels Bohr's home. Here is what Vicky said to Sasha Stefan about Einstein and Bohr. Einstein. Nobel Prize in Physics, 1921. Niels Bohr. Nobel Prize in Physics, 1922. Okay. And these four, as I often said, is my intellectual father. Not, not only in respect to physical insight and quantum mechanics, but in a way his approach to, to the problems, to not only physics, but philosophy, and then his idea of complementarity, which in political aspect is very important. Is that there are always many ways of looking at a problem that are apparently in contradiction, like art and science. Well, the physics example, of course, is waves and properties. Uh, the, the electron is both. both. And uh, although it's seemingly contradictory, it's war, coined the word complementary for that. And uh, also art and science. Religion and science, uh, and many other avenues of human experience that are necessary to get the full impact of life and of thought. And uh, this uh, certainly was a great influence on me, philosophically. And the character, I always like to see different sides of subject. And, uh, that is the main sport. And apart from this, of course, uh, it was so helpful in 1936 when I had to leave church because it was three years of college and we couldn't stay longer at Freunde. And uh, Nazism was prevalent and he, he uh, assembled, he, fought, he found money for all these refugee, Jewish refugee scientists. And then and every year to England and America to find jobs for them. He found a job for me at Rochester in the state of New York. And uh, he helped so many people. And at the same time, you know, he did uh, very intensively interested in physics, especially at that time nuclear physics, compound nucleus and all that. And uh, so I have an unending admiration for this man. I think he's unique. Of course, one always compares him with Einstein, but Einstein is a completely different personality. Einstein is concentrated on the physics, and it, 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 uh, whereas more the human qualities of war are, in my mind, more outstanding than the case of Einstein. Although Einstein is certainly, uh, as a physicist, the greatest was. And I had not, I had, of course, I knew Einstein very well, but uh, personally, but I had not too much contact. It is hard to get contact with Einstein. I, he was not communicative with people? No, or? no, he has practically no students. And, and uh, I played music. Perfect. And, uh, so he was favorite was Bach in a sense. Yeah, Bach. Bach and Mozart. Exactly. And your favorite is? I do not want to concentrate the whole classical music spectrum. But uh, he is not a great violinist. I mean, he's a better physicist than But was Bohr in, in any sense musician? Uh, Passively. I remember that I played in Bohr, Bohr's house, chamber music. With, for example, with Koffermann, with the German physicist, uh, Hans Koffermann. And, uh, and he liked to have good music in his house, but he did not decide.
Among the many breakthroughs that Vickers research has yielded, there have been the theory of the widths of energy levels of the electron, the cloud crystal ball model of nuclear structure, and the MIT bag model of hadronic matter. In 1932, Vicky was the member of the organizing team working on the show, The Copenhagen Faust, as the tribute to the 100th anniversary of Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's death. God, the father, was Niels Bohr. Paul Ehrenfest was Faust. And Mephistopheles was played by Wolfgang Pauli. I was happy, says Stefan, to learn about the Copenhagen Faust. Marlowe's Dr. Faustus and Goethe's Faust have been fascinating me since my adolescent years. About the same time the idea had been born in my mind to create my own story about a physicist in search for absolute knowledge. The idea has been brought into fruition by publishing my four books in the period from 2002 until 2007. It culminated in publishing of my Falstaff trilogy in 2011. Physics and Society, the book celebrating Weisskopf's life achievements. During Vicky's visit to the Institute for Advanced Physics Studies, Stefan University, in La Jolla, California, in 1992, the idea was conceived that the book be published by the American Institute of Physics Press, New York, celebrating Vicky's life achievements. The book was published under the title, Physics and Society, with 18 contributors, including seven Nobel Prize winners in physics. V. Stefan, editor, Physics and Society, essays in honor of Victor Frederick Weisskopf by the International Community of Physicists, American Institute of Physics Press and Springer, New York, 1998. The Contributors in Physics and Society Weisskopf's Honors, Awards, Presidential Positions, and Memberships 
Weisskopf is the recipient of a great number of honors and awards worldwide. He was president of the American Physical Society, 1960, president of American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and director general, 1961 to 1965, of the European Center for Nuclear Research, CERN. In 1976, Vicky was elected to the Pontifical Academy of Science, an advisory body to the Pope. He focused on the efforts for nuclear disarmament through the Pontifical Academy. Weisskopf's Timetable